Hello and welcome, my name is Jonathan Ringer and I'm here to talk about why one should use Nix packages. I'll be covering what differentiates Nix packages from other Linux package repositories and why those differences are so incredibly valuable. So let's begin. Nix packages first and foremost is a purely functional package manager. This purity allows for the packages that are packaged through Nix to be not only reliable but also reproducible. This allows for consistent development environments as well, so this makes it great for developers. And this purity also makes it so that they are content addressable. I'll be getting to this a little bit later, but if there is a binary cache form of a particular package that you want that is a, built by a signed Nix packages uh, cache, then you will be able to receive just the, the binary form of it. Because these are reliable and reproducible, this also makes it so that a system as well as a user are able to share the same store of packages and not worry about a user invalidating or corrupting a particularly installed package, which could compromise the system. And lastly, portable. Portable means that not only is this able to run on Nixos systems, but any type of Linux system which is able to build a Nix CLI is able to leverage Nix packages. Nix packages is, can then be used on Ubuntu, Fedora, Red Hat, Arch, many other Linux distributions, but probably the most peculiar one is also on Mac OS. So if you have a Mac machine, you're also able to leverage Nix packages and use it as if you were on Nix OS in most cases. But enough of the high level detail, what does this mean for a particular user? Well, we're able to define packages in a nice declarative way. So here is my Python request package. Uh, we can denote that it's a Python package by the helper function here called build Python package. We're able to define a package name, version, we're able to pull the source from PyP, which is the Python package repository, or the canonical Python pa package repository, as well as we're able to define some dependencies. So we're able to pull in PyTest, which will be our t uh, test suite runner, as well as some other dependencies that we need, such as URL lib3, IDNA, chartet, and certify. Uh, because the test suite largely deals with the network and Nix packages is, is big on purity, and network is inherently impure. Uh, unfortunately, the test suite is not able to be ran, but that's fine. Um, and for Nix packages in particular, since this has been uploaded to the official Nix packages repository, we have some metadata to encapsulate what this package includes in terms of its description for users who want to consume it, a particular homepage to find more information, as well as a license to determine how we can use as well as redistribute this package. Free packages are able to be reserved through the official Nix packages cache. However, unfree packages, generally you can have expression that you build. However, they cannot be distributed through Nix packages itself. Now that we have intuition of how packages are encapsulated in Nix packages, we can see that we can then leverage this as a higher abstraction in defining a user's system. So if I were to go to my home.nix, which is the canonical file for home manager, which manages uses Nix principles to manage your home user profile, you can see that I'm able to define my user environment through a nice declarative syntax saying that I want my packages to be included from this packages function, which references my my packages.nix and here you can see that all of my packages that I want to install to my particular user environment is installed through this package. The nice thing to note about this is that I do not have to worry about upgrading and you can see that there's no version numbers. Uh, largely whatever uh, checkout of Nix packages I have as part of my Nix path I'm able to get from here. So I will largely get the later latest version of each package because I'm on the unstable version, which is the rolling package distribution channel. Going back to my home.nix, you will see that I also uh, have, if I want to say, have my polybar 
service instantiated. Uh, you can see at the bottom of my screen, the poly bar is this bottom bar which has information, uh, small information as well as uh, time and date and a few other things. I can easily define this to be turned on by just doing these few simple steps here. Uh, I can enable it, which turns the service on, as well as I can do some configuration on which uh, polybar package I want it to pull from, as well as some configuration, as well as the startup script, which is used to instantiate the service. Um, this encapsulates a lot more detail than uh, you would think, so this is also creating a systemd unit file, which will uh, be created on each user environment, as well as uh, worries about installing the package in the first place, and a few other details. Uh, further down, we will see that I have many more of the applications that are turned on, as well as my Git configuration. Uh, this can also be controlled through a version control dot file, uh, so that's not too uh, surprising, but the nice thing about this is that I am able to have a central point to configure all services as well as programs that I want to find on my particular machine. And also this can be uh, extended to further abstractions. So since I was able to abstract about my user's environment, I'm also able to abstract about a system environment, which uh, can be denoted by going to my Nixos configuration. And the Nixos configuration, this can be thought of as my sh machine. So when it boots up in the first place, uh, what kernel modules are going to be loaded, uh, what uh, type of boot entries I want to be shown while it is booting into my operating system, as well as what is going to be installed across all users what the default shell will be, uh, whether or not I want OpenSSH to be enabled, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can see that every aspect of my system is able to be defined here, and I am largely able to have just one file to say exactly how a particular system should be instantiated. So this is incredibly nice too, is if you have multiple machines in which you have to worry about is my particular uh, laptop versus workstation versus home desktop, uh, uh, are they all within sync of each other? You're able to share one unified configuration file, which is then able to be instantiated uh, across those machines and create a reproducible environment for all of them. And that is why I feel like Nix packages is uh, the way of the future. Uh, this is s this type of extensibility I have not seen in any other type of package or other distribution and it is beautiful to see how this can be leveraged in higher abstractions to accomplish what I want from not only a user perspective but also from a DevOps perspective. So thank you. I'll be explaining more details about Nix, Nix packages and Nixos in further series so please tune in to those as well. Thank you.